Gaming on mobile in 2024 is super diverse, but sometimes you want to bust out some of the classics in Game on the Go. Well, Android has a ton of emulators that let you play thousands of the best games, even going as far back as the 1970s, and here are some of our favourites. Also, we're keeping this list super simple and not listing out every single individual emulator that you can use in an Android phone. Instead, just a few that we use regularly. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. Actually, before that, we need a little disclaimer in this video. So while emulators are completely legal, the distribution of some copyrighted ROM files is illegal. And this video does not promote or endorse the distribution of copyrighted material. Users are responsible for obtaining ROM files legally, such as purchasing physical copies of the games or through legal digital distribution platforms. Additionally, many of these emulators will require BIOS files to properly function, BIOS files are essential components of the emulated console's hardware, so while BIOS files are often freely available online, it's important to be aware that their distribution may be also subject to some legal restrictions. Users should research and understand the legal implications of obtaining and using BIOS files before doing so, and I will leave links in the description for you to learn more about these legal ramifications. The actual reason for making this video is that I've been playing lots of games or lots of my favorite games from yesteryear with this superb Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. I've had this for a while now, and this is an older Unisoc Tiger T6118 powered Android gaming console. It costs around about $160 now. It has enough power to play loads of your classic mid 90s, which is my favorite era games and older consoles without really breaking a sweat. It's also tailored out of the box to play lots of games and has been my choice of gaming handheld console alongside the Steam Deck OLED, that must admit that for a while now, and I do think you will have a better experience with newer devices and with a paired gaming controller. I will leave a link to our paired gaming controller, the one that I use with my S24 Ultra and my Pixel 9 Pro down in the description as well. If you do use a newer handset, that means the chipset is gonna be more powerful and it should mean you should be able to play a lot of games without any issues. First up is a PSP emulator. I think this console has so many solid games that you may never have played because it wasn't quite as popular as the Game Boy and PPSSPP, great name, does a perfect job of recreating games in pif pixel perfect style, easy for me to say. Like lots of Android emulators, you can adjust the resolution output, change things like anti-aliasing settings for a sharper image and clean up the experience with more controls and graphical tweaks. Games look better than they ever did on the original hardware with this emulator, and I've used PPSSPP on lots of phones over the years, so I'm confident it'll run on most devices with at least default settings, but almost with anything, you will need to do a little bit of tuning to get the perfect settings. For me, the turbo button is one of my favorite features as it lets you fast forward or speed up slow gameplay loops or cutscenes that happen to drag and you can't skip. I like using this to go through some of the slow menus as well, the UI is super easy to navigate and there are loads of ways to tweak the experience and performance. I even find it's pretty good on battery as well, which is important if you want a game for a long time, which is why I put this one right up first in this video. Another one of my favorites is Duck Station and this has become my go-to original PlayStation 1 emulator on Android, mostly because it's pre-installed on my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. It's also happening to be one of the best emulators out there right now. I did prefer it to EPSXE because you can do things like upscale to 4K, but I think at 1080p, the gameplay experience is absolutely flawless on every device I've tested it on. Having a powerful Android phone does help with the emulation, but you can get it running on mid-rangers if you are happy to tinker with it, like most emulators, that is. It's almost unfair that this app is so good and completely free and open source. You can plug it into RetroArch as well to handle some of the PS1 gaming if you want that option. Be careful though when you're tweaking the settings, it can cause issues or at least some issues with some games, but the default settings should be fine for most PS1 ROMs. And I think this is the one application on this list that gets my biggest seal of approval. I think one of ReDream's best features is that it brings many classic Dreamcast titles to a potentially wider audiences. It is a small library and the console didn't reach mass appeal. Some games do need some tuning, but most will run really smoothly even on lower end hardware. The interface is really nice and clean with many controller and hardware input options, including practically any controller you happen to pair with your phone. And I would recommend that because you can't actually resize the individual on-screen buttons and they can get in the way with some titles. This is a really good way to get into the Dreamcast library. It isn't the biggest, but it means you can fire through, you can play through these, including the incredible Shenmue 2, which I do recommend you go and play for yourself. N64 emulation has come a long way, but it still isn't perfect for every game for some reason. I will say though that M64 Plus FZ is the best if you want to play through classics like 
Zelda Ocarina of Time or Mario 64, two of my favourites, on your Android phone. You will get ads with this application in the free version unless you actually download this from GitHub or pay for the pro version. I do recommend doing for either of those. The downside here is if you go beyond the scope of some of the biggest titles, you probably will run into some problems with specific game ROMs. It's just a problem with N64 emulation, period. If you play at native resolution though, most of the biggest titles will run without a hitch. There are also lots of ways to improve the experience of gaming with on-screen buttons aiding as a lot of controllers you'll pair with your device actually lack some of the dedicated N64 gamepad options. So this is a really good way to get back into N64 titles. So Drastic is one of the few emulators that is actually built from the ground up specifically for Android. So that means it's the perfect way to play Nintendo DS titles on your smartphone. On foldable phones like the Pixel Fold, and even the Flip series, which I haven't been able to test this on, I think this is probably the most epic way to experience the dual screen experience of classic Nintendo DS games, as you actually don't need to switch between the screen views, something you can do with a traditional slab phone, so you're not missing out if you do want to use one over there. On a regular phone, as a note, you can have both screens side by side so that the bottom touch screen is emulated practically perfectly. I like being able to view both screens at once, but you can Set it so the main gameplay screen is visible all of the time. Everything runs like a dream here with zero, zero issues, no issues or hitches with practically any ROM. And this is my favorite way to play through some of the older Pokemon titles. I highly recommend Pizza Boy A for Game Boy Advance and C Pro for Game Boy Color games. Not because these apps do anything that other Game Boy emulators can't do in terms of performance. It's actually the visuals because I think this is the best looking emulator I've ever used on Android and at just 11 megabytes, and in tandem with a few other ROMs, it'll barely take up any space on your phone or tablet. So it's well worth having if you do want to have a quick blast on your favorite games of yesteryear. By this point in time, even scientific calculators can run Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. I love playing a lot of my favorite titles because of the nostalgia factor when playing on a colorful console. So being able to recreate custom skins for portrait or even landscape mode is a great bonus. And one of the reasons why I think you should go and pick this one up. The best PS2 emulator for Android is Aether SX2, but sadly that is no longer being developed and can't be downloaded directly from the Google Play Store. The good news here is that Nether SEX2 can be sideloaded to play some of Sony's best games, and it is based on that older build and it has no ads as standard. So Android phones that utilize Adreno graphics should provide the best experience when trying to emulate PS2, but Marley powered chipsets will run Nether SX2 without too much issue. The only downside here is that you do need a 64-bit processor and a 64-bit version of Android to get this to work at all. PS2 emulation is still quite taxing on most phones, so to get above 60 FPS or even close to 60 FPS on your favorite titles, you might need to make some adjustments and lower some settings. Luckily though, Nether SX2 has a myriad of options to tweak and lots of guides online on how to do it. And I will leave a link down in the description if you do wanna get started playing PS2 games on your Android phone. So last but not least, I do feel really guilty mentioning Yuzu because it's another application that's technically no longer developed or available via official channels, although you can get the APK from sources online. I think this is one of the very few ways or the best way to play Switch games on your Android phone. And because most modern phones are a lot more powerful than the Tegra X1 that the Nintendo console boasts, I think this can provide a much better experience with higher frame rates for even the most recent releases on Switch. So if you play recent titles, Yuzu is arguably one of the best emulators out there, and that's why I've even mentioned it at all. However, it's not with some pitfalls of its own. You will need to tweak the settings to get the optimum experience, like all of these emulators, as I keep saying, and there will be some trial and error included. Being able to play current AAA Nintendo titles on your phone, though, will never get old. Make sure you have a fairly recent phone, though, with a powerful chipset for the best experience, as even on my Galaxy S24 Ultra, it sometimes isn't quite perfect. And sometimes textures, I need to tweak settings to get textures to appear properly, but it is well worth the effort. So that's a really short list of my favorite and our favorite emulators on Android, a lot that we're using recently. We have missed a ton of good options like RetroArch or Dolphin, which are other great options for playing classic console and MAME and arcade games, and obviously a lot of other Nintendo consoles. It's been a bit Nintendo heavy, I must admit, but that's my era. There are a few emulators that we play day in, day out though, and I wanted to share them. I wanna ask you, what do you play the most on your phone? Is it new games or is it classic games? Like I tend to play classic games, I prefer them. Let us know down in the comment sections below and give me your emulator 
actual recommendations. I always want to try out new emulators and try out games that I maybe may have missed first time around. But big shout out to you, the mobile gamer, you're here. There are so many high quality games out there and really so little time to play. Thanks for our channel members on screen now and yeah, I'll catch you later.